I'll just be completely honest with you. A lot of times when I'll talk about Genshin, a lot of times I'm usually like, Oh, Lamine is so right. She is so sexy. I can't wait to see more about Lamine and her story. And I wouldn't be surprised if somebody would be like, Well, Jay, is Lamine your waifu? And technically, kinda, yes. But also at the same time, I would fully admit that I'm pretty sure a white-haired cat will just start beating the hell out of a blonde traveler. So I ain't got time to have that on my hands. But when it comes down to things, when it comes to a lot of the characters in Genshin, there's not really many characters I'm like super down for or like super really wanting to know more of and just really care about. Like I like everybody, but don't get me wrong, just like mainly the focus is on Lamine a lot of time because the main story is about her obviously trying to do what she needs to do. And the only character I could say maybe that I really care for will be Chi Chi because that was the first character I really wanted and that was the first character I actually got as a 5 star. So, and there's just a, like a lot of stuff that you should not just really like, honestly. So, there's that. But with other characters, there's not really many characters I would say of side characters I really enjoy in to Genshin's story. And that has changed with Farina, honestly. Nuvale is there too, but we're gonna talk about strictly waifus. Farina is like the third person I would say that I'm really super intrigued to learn more about and wanting to see more of. I ain't the only one, obviously. There's plenty of people that's already standing, making full-blown nations all about Farina, honestly. Instead of seeing the House of Mizuno, we're gonna see the House of Farina. That's just gonna be the case that's gonna happen very soon. But when it comes down to things, I would say this is probably the most interesting Archon out of all of them, right? Because, don't get wrong, the other Archons are fine, even A, I know people hate Inazuma, but A is fine too. But when it comes down to things, I really think this is going to be the most interesting one. Just because, if you look back at everything, Vinci was free carrying and not necessarily like, you know, super really doing anything that's majorly important, whatever. And only done a few things that's like, very important and kind of doesn't necessarily care about seeing what his nation is about and stuff like that just kind of going through the motions and then if you really look at Vinci now a lot of times when we see him it's just him basically taking part of these special events and other fun stuff and basically he just said after I help out with this one dude with his problem about an adventure that he so tried to impersonate and whatever once I help out with him I don't care about doing any more serious shit I don't care to do anything like that anymore. So when it comes down to things, I just want to be included in some fun shit now. If there's anything else that's serious, do not call me. And that's essentially what he is, because he just got brought into what, like Lantern, right? He got brought into this poem thing that's gonna happen very soon. The wind bloom stuff. That's when you really see Vinci. And it's quite a shame, if I'm being honest. Zhang Li is like someone that is very strict and you know very traditional. And why there's something fine with that and there's something that i can appreciate that about sticking to the old ways and maybe seeing how some of the older ways is kind of is and you know saying that it's kind of fine in certain areas right and you know that just kind of goes to show you that everything of the past it's not necessarily something that needs to be evolved or changed or need to be new or is outdated all right maybe some things in the past was actually making sense for a reason but when it comes down to things you know jean louis a really traditional straight type of person as cool as his meteor shit is still is do not get me wrong it's still like you know one of the things that kind of just doesn't really stand out a lot from him because again he's just really strict and kind of like a person that's i guess to a lot of people will be kind of secretive i suppose and while he does again have some cool moments and while his voice actor is definitely really damn good at his job obviously uh, one, I still feel like he's not necessarily like anybody that's truly like someone, like someone I really want to know more about, honestly. At least at this moment in time. Don't get wrong. If we was looking at the Connery and Archon War nonsense when it came down to Zhang Li, I definitely want to see a lot of shit that happened with this man. I want to see it because obviously, plenty of people were like, "Holy shit! Look at what Zhang Li can do!" Right? He was hella powerful, honestly. They just nerfed his ass. And I can believe it. I can 100% believe it. And that goes as far as, like, the Adept side, too. Because I know people want to see, also, Cloud Retainer in her human form, which I want to see, too. But when it comes down to things, do some crazy stuff. But, you know, 
out of everything, there's not really much to really care for when it comes to, you know, Zhongli, honestly. And again, he's more of a strict person, so it's not like we won't really know too much. That's why they had to give him Hu Tao, because they had to balance out that strictness with some fun personality, honestly. Then we go to Inazuma, and we look at Shogun, and Shogun is okay, right? She's someone that's learning, but not necessarily too, like, you know, free in, I guess, having fun in some shape or form, because she kind of doesn't know what the concept of fun is. But when it comes down to things, she's just someone that's kind of learning and just kind of, I guess, still trying to lead her nation, but not in as a super, I would say, I would say she's trying to be like more with the people, but she's not necessarily having an easy time doing that considering the past and all that type of stuff. But she's trying though, at least you could say that. Granted, I know people again don't like Inazuma, but still. There's a bit of this. There's, there's a bit of nice stuff in Inazuma. Let, let, let's not discredit Inazuma all that much. Come on now. Then you have Sumeru, which they hated. They, which they, I won't say they hated their Archon, but they didn't necessarily give her the respect that she deserved, obviously, and locked her ass up just for people to make a new, uh, basically a new god and whatever. That shit was whack. And essentially, when it comes down to her, she basically just doesn't know much about the world because she lost a lot of her memories and stuff like that. And, you know, she's still just trying to take her job seriously as well, right? Again, there's a lot of things with these Archons that's just like, well, they either really are fun or they're just really, like, strict as hell, you know? And that's essentially how it kind of goes, unfortunately. But when it comes down to things, with Farina at least, there's a bit of something that's different. Because you think, oh, she's free and, you know, carefree and whatever and stuff like that. And she's maybe not as strict as every other Archon. She's basically like Vinci, but better, right? And that's what you would normally get because all this sense of drama and theater and all this sort of stuff. But then when you really kind of take a look at what's really happening and how she kind of have these weird tone shifts and things like that, you kind of see that, oh, she's actually quite serious about what she's doing. But she's also someone that, you know, is there for somewhat of the fun of it. But is there a reason for that though maybe there is you know that part of her that is like acting like she's having fun and things like that but actually has some deep trauma or something of the sort that kind of is effing with her in some shape and form and that's like a thing that i feel like majority of people should pay attention to especially with the theories that kind of surrounding her like oh maybe there was more than one hydro archon maybe there was three of them because there was three chairs at where the dancing robots are at. Or maybe one Archon is the Oratrice making neat that Anise Cardinal. Or another one was the inner side of her mind of Farina and then Farina herself. You know, maybe she split herself up in different types of ways to become what it is now. And other different stuff, you know. Because again, in these, tra in these trailers when it comes to a certain voice talking to Nouvellet, Obviously, you can kind of tell that there is something weird here that came from maybe the previous Hydro Archon or, you know, maybe came from a split up version of Arena herself in some shape or form because she sounded like she's taking her job a lot more serious and whatever. And there's just a lot of stuff to it, right? There's a lot of stuff that kind of goes with it. And hell, even in the trailer itself, you can hear Alakino, who I assume is Alakino, basically it's like, oh, you haven't done shit as an Archon. You ain't worth not a damn thing. And essentially it's a pretty damn pissed off about what's gonna happen. Then you also have the fact that also Farina was begging for her life in that trailer too. So again, there's a lot of stuff that's kinda like, huh, you never really thought you would see an Archon be in these type of positions, now would you? Plus if you really think about it, outside of Nahida, every Archon has like in the beginning of their, you know, chapters or whatever, when you go to a new nation, they kind of show you what they are about and what their power is. When you first boot up the game to go to Monset, you're fighting Devala and he gives you, Vinci gives you basically these floating wings mechanics that you'll never get to see ever again. And that was like the first thing that, you know, you could see. Then you have, you know, Leeway where Zhang Li doesn't necessarily help you a lot of the time, obviously. But he does kind of help you out gameplay wise and stuff like that. Like you can definitely see him that, oh, he's in the journey of things, he can fight and whatever. You know, even if he doesn't go all out on certain things. Then you have Inazuma who, A, off rip was just like, Titty Sword, I'm about to slice your ass up in the name of Lightning. And that's essentially how that goes for that. Then Nahida obviously didn't get a chance to really show off what she could do. 
you know, until very much later. But also at the same time, she kind of did already show you what she can do. Mainly because of the little event quest that kind of happened with everybody at the Golden Apple Archipelago with Kazaha and them. And she kind of did her like little brain talking thing. So that kind of shows you a little bit of the power of what she has. But Farina, if you notice, when we left Sumeru, we didn't get any type of, you know, foreshadowing of events that's going to happen with anything. We didn't get any type of like, you know, powers that we've seen yet while we're in Fontaine of her. So it kind of goes to show you that this isn't one this isn't like the complete version of farina it can't be because there gotta be something weird that's happening here you know plus if you pay attention to her drip marketing you would see that also behind her there is no like element on top of the you know circle in the background where every other archon has it for theirs so that's also like a weird thing the only thing that we know of which was revealed today is that apparently one of the witches from the hexen circle is apparently going to be involved in this because I think it was like they said something about Mage Inn which that's going to be part some of that's part of the Hexen Circle which people already put that shit together so how does that combine into things I have absolutely no type of idea and it's going to be very interesting regardless of what the hell happens maybe maybe Farina and her kind of know each other and maybe they kind of split Farina up, up in different ways or maybe helped out with Fontaine in some shape and form or stuff like that because we gotta remember the people of the Hexen Circle are insanely powerful that's the same place where Cleese and Mom come from so who knows what the hell is gonna be in that damn nightmare fuel of a group of witches honestly who knows what they can do I just feel like Farina is just a lot more interesting than the other Archons right I do feel like they're a lot more interesting. And once we solve the problem of the nation, I feel like of all the characters, they won't necessarily hold back on any lies or anything like that. Especially when it comes to anything of the divine. Because if you paid attention to the, you know, preview of all the places we're going to go to, I think Dainsley said that Farina is kind of scared of the divine as well. So maybe she might want us to stop this nonsense of our journey and stuff like that. Who knows? It, it could it could be. It could be the case. Again, I'm just really kind of curious about Farina as a character and want to see what they're going to do. And again, with all the other Archons combined, don't get me wrong, I do like Nahito because at least she told us something about things that we don't know. But still nonetheless, you know, it's just like I, I do want to know what other stuff is out there. And even Nahita kind of keeps secrets a little bit because she talk, didn't even tell us about the sky being fake as hell right she didn't tell us about the sky at all and maybe farina might know something about it who knows but anyway that's essentially all i really have for this one so hopefully you did enjoy if you did be sure to like share and subscribe hit the bell notification on your way out also follow me on the socials and if you'd like to donate to the channel patreon is available as well and until this avoid signing off have a day.